That is looks kind of interesting. It. Because this is took a. This is just three days worth of trash, most coming from New York City, and that claw is taking it to be burned into electricity. But we're not actually in New York City. We're in Jersey. Once the garbage man comes and picks it up, you Holy don't think any more about it. But it has a long way to go after that. None of New Yorkers' waste is processed in the city. Instead, it ends up as far away as Ohio, Pennsylvania, and even South Carolina. So getting trash from here to here takes thousands of workers, trucks, trains, cranes, and even barges, operating nonstop to ship waste across the East Coast. Rain, snow, hail, storm, there's no stopping us. And it all costs the city hundreds of millions. Here's that what is actually crazy. happens to New York City's 3.2 million tons of trash a year. New York City's Department of Sanitation sends its fleet of 2,000 garbage trucks to start picking up at 5 a.m. You have to keep active. Some guys like to work out, some guys don't. Basically, it depends on you. What do you do? Me? I don't work out. This is my workout. This is my daily workout. That's Frank, a 23-year veteran sanitation worker. Well, you get immune to the smell. You don't smell garbage, you smell money. Check it to see how solid it is. You can tell when the truck is full. Frank heads to the dump station in the Upper East Side. By then, the sun's coming up. We are currently at 91st Street MPS. Doors will Again, open as the truck comes trash. in, and there's radiation detectors that will read the truck. Trucks pause at the way station to help the city keep track of how much trash New Yorkers produce. Then handles tilt the hopper. Then she'll push the blade, and the blade will push the, the material all the way out to clear the whole truck. It's roughly 450 to 600 tons a day. Tractors move the trash into the containers beneath the ground. It's sort of a dance. One FDL will clear the wall, and one FDL will blow containers. Getting the material containerized as quickly as possible and sealed keeps that smell down. A stamper then it packs in the smell, garbage. Though. Mattresses are used like a sponge to sop up anything left over. When we have garbage on the floor, it'll take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to load a container. Once the Department of Sanitation seals a container fun, and slides it out to the I top, wouldn't say fun, responsibility fun. then goes to Covanta, the waste to energy company. I, I, I would assume that, dude, I, I make it an act of conscious effort when I put, throw the trash outside, right? Tell us something like, like, you know, no, no glass dog shit, not like a bunch of things. That, you know, keep it simple, dude, because I feel like it'd be annoying or it would take even the, uh, the smallest part of fun out when it, it's just annoying for them to Those pick two up. two marine transfer stations Or dangerous, in the city. dude. Containers are picked up by the crane and put on the barge. 48 containers go on the barge. You know? Every one of these containers represents a truckload that we have taken off of the city streets and out of the tunnels, reducing carbon emissions and reducing congestion and wear and tear on the city's infrastructure. This is, a tug attaches do shit. to the loaded trash bar. You're right, I don't do anything. I just I just light on stream for virtue signaling purposes. Ha! Tug captain Woo! Jason Harris is now in charge. He gets a go ahead for a 9.30 a.m. departure. What you see here is, is called Hell's Gate. This is the upper end of the East River. Tides play a major factor in the times that we can transfer barges. You can't go against the tide when it's max tide. It's too strong. We would actually come to a dead stop on this boat and barge. You wait until you can go with it. Quite often, a barge gets, gets filled up, and we will have to wait two, three, maybe four hours before the tide is, is in the favor. He navigates this heavy load safely along one of the busiest waterways in the Jeez. world down the East River, through New York Harbor to Staten Island. Three hours later, the tug and barge back up into the global transfer station. It is an inherently dangerous operation to move heavy equipment overhead. Then a train takes it to one of Covanta's waste to energy facilities. It can also that get there via so truck. Much work for All trash. of Manhattan's residential trash goes to waste energy facilities like this one to be burned and turned into electricity. This facility processes up to a million tons of waste annually. Once the trucks scale in and come up to the tipping floor, they dump in front of one of these bays. Tractors push the trash into a massive storage pit, 93 feet deep and 270 feet long. Between eight and 9,000 tons are in the refuse pit. It's about three to four days worth of trash. A giant grapple claw descends over the trash. In one swoop, it can pick up as much as one trash truck carries. I'm actually impressed by The claw builds claw a wall of trash to prevent it from avalanching onto the tipping floor. It also helps to make more space for incoming refuse.
I wasn't listening. Then they burn it? Look at garbage a very oh. different way since I've been working here. We create a lot of garbage as, as a population. Two claws work together in tandem, dumping trash into hoppers leading to the incinerator. That's smoke, Romeo's dude. an expert giant claw operator. 21 years of playing the claim. There was no shortage <laughs> of fuel for our boilers. Toy Story is the first thing everyone thinks of. Disney actually got inspiration for the Toy Story 3 incinerator sequence from a Covanta plant. The incinerators burn the trash at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes one to two hours to burn an entire hopper load. We've now entered the control room area of the plant. This is the brain of the operation. Yes, it is. <laughs> and here's your brain. He's got camera views of the combustion zone. How important are you for this? Place running correctly. How important am I? I am the guy. <laughs> I, I am the guy. He's in the hot seat. Russell monitors as the furnace heats up steam, turning this turbine and generating enough energy Disney. to power this plant and 46,000 homes in the region. After everything's burned, all that's left over is ash and metal. This magnet pulls off enough metal to make 21,000 cars. The leftover ash goes to cover landfills. Next, the plant tackles those nasty fumes what? that burning trash causes. First, leftover gases go through a scrubber reactor. A lime slurry cleans any acid gases, and activated carbon absorbs pollutants. Then it goes through a bag house, basically a bunch of filters. So what's left coming out of that smokestack? Constituents of the flue gas is what's in normal air, like nitrogen, carbon dioxide, moisture. The alternative to this would be going to a landfill. Waste to energy does produce CO2 emissions, landfill. but in a year, this process eliminates a million tons of CO2 emissions a landfill would have produced. We generate a very small amount of methane. The methane we offset from a landfill results in an actual decrease of CO2 emissions. The city hopes to keep moving trash on waterways to of facilities course, like it's this right. one. It's all part of its goal of becoming zero waste to landfill People by 2030, so trash, but that is dude. becoming harder and harder to reach. Only about 30% of New York City's waste turns into energy. The rest ends up in harmful methane-producing landfills as far away as South Carolina and Ohio. And it takes a significant investment to move it. Every year exporting trash costs the city about $400 million. So why does New York City send its trash so far away? In 1881, New York City streets were notoriously filthy. So dirty, people were getting sick. Yeah. So the Department of Sanitation was established to Question, clean Jack. the streets. Jack. And the department did help mop. 429 million a year. Couldn't they just build that facility right there with that amount? Like, how much can it really be to build it? But the city. But the city quickly ran out of room to put all of its trash. Just build it, dude. In the early 1900s, the city turned to dumping trash into the ocean. Even though it was illegal, as much as 80% of the city's trash ended up in the sea. This continued until 1934, when a Supreme Court case where? forced the city to stop ocean well, the fuck and onto the island. In the then? 70s, incinerators used for much of the 1900s were closed down because they didn't meet the EPA's clean air standards. So the city opened up landfills across the five boroughs, including at one point, the world's largest. No room, In 1973, huh? New York even built out Lower Manhattan using trash mounds. But even that wasn't enough. With nowhere else to put it, the city began sending its waste to other states. Most of the landfills in this area <laughs> have been closed down, so the available landfills are getting further and further away. Exporting trash is a costly practice with a big environmental footprint, and it puts the burden on communities far from these shiny skyscrapers. For now, New York City's only choice is to keep exporting the trash. But ultimately, the department says the best solution would be getting New Yorkers to waste less altogether. Trash is like one of those things that you put it long. outside and forget about it. I think everybody should know what happens. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't know that New York was that stacked where you you can't even build, did a, a, a... So what they get rid of. Did, if you know where it's going two, like, two and you don't like where it's going, man. maybe you'll find ways to recycle things. I would never take anything home because my wife wouldn't allow it. But so, there'll so be compact. a but there. If I see something that's Star Wars, I'm going to look for it and make... If it's good, I'm going to take it home. That was a good video. I actually enjoyed that a lot.